Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Happy Wednesday, October 10th, 2018 to you all. Of course, good afternoon to those of you who are joining me here on the East Coast. It's just after 12 noon Eastern time. I'll say good morning to those of you, of course, who are joining us from the Central Time Zones, Mountain Time Zones, and Pacific Time Zones. And of course, good evening for any of you who are joining us from across the pond, parts of UK or parts of Europe. Good early morning if you're joining us from Australia or parts of Asia. Welcome to our presentation. Today we're going to discuss researching and analyzing a new options position. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Mike Chupka. I'm the Director of Education uh, here at Power Options and at Radioactive Trading. All right, well, what are we going to cover today? Today I'm going to discuss with you some of our tips and tricks for analyzing a new options position. We're going to look at the steps you can use to narrow down potential trades and potentially avoid mistakes as well. Now we're going to use the Power Options tools to illustrate our steps, but of course this content applies to any tools that you are using. Investor will still find useful information out of today's webinar. Well, first, we always want to begin with what is Power Options? Well, Power Options is a one-stop shop for self-directed options investors. Uh, Ernie's Renner created Power Options back in 1997, so we've been in business for over 20 years. We offer patented tools for searching across the universe of options to identify positions that match your criteria. We covered that last week, as well as analyzing positions, which we're going to look at today. We also offer powerful tools for managing and tracking your positions, our portfolio tools and the different tools inside of there. We, of course, offer a vast virtual library of education, white papers, tutorials, archived webinars and videos for strategy-specific discussions, management techniques, as well as using the tools on power options. And we do support over 23 of the most commonly used option strategies. Everyone here on staff trades options, myself included, of course, and we use these tools to trade options in our personal account. All right, so here we are. We want to open a new options trade, whether it's our time in the schedule where we just crossed an expiration, we open our new trades on Monday or Tuesday, we just closed out some positions from the recent pullback we've seen in the market the past day or two, especially today in some positions, some of my positions, I should say. But where do we begin? Well, first, you might want to find a stock that's bullish or bearish or neutral. If I'm trading bull spreads or if I'm trading covered calls or naked puts, naturally I'm looking for something neutral to bullish. If I'm trading bear call credit spreads or I'm buying puts, speculating on a market turndown, I want to see something that's bearish. And if you're doing iron condors, butterflies, maybe even calendar calls or double diagonals, you want to do something that's neutral. Now, at the same time, you want to find options that have the premium or the cost that you're looking for offer the potential return with maybe the probability that matches your trading plan and more. But of course, we really want to do both at the same time. That's the benefit of the Power Options tools because you can find those positions that match your stock and options criteria all on the same screen. All right, but let's just take a sample trade. Earlier this morning, even though the market was a little bit tumultuous, I logged on to Power Options, went into bull put credit, and then I pulled up my weekly bull put search. And the one that came up on the top of the top three or four trades that were listed there was EOG Resources trading at around 130.10. Now to enter a bull put, of course, or if I'm looking at any bullish trade, but in this case, our bull put was selling the 19th of October, 124 put for 48 cents, and at the time, buying the 19th October, 121 at 22 cents. Simple bull put spread, slightly out of the money, Gave us a 26 cent net credit on a three point spread. 9.5% return off of our true risk of about $2.74. And we have an 86.8% theoretical probability that in the next nine days, EOG would remain above 124. It's a reasonable trade. It's got the reasonable probability I want, the return I want for a nine day trade and the net credit. But whether you found a trade you're interested in yourselves using a search tool such as Power Options or from your broker, or maybe it was suggested to you from a covered call or spread picking service, 
a friend or a colleague told you that EOG looks like a good neutral to bullish trade and you considered, well, maybe a bull put spread would work well until I can really get a good gauge of it, or maybe you picked it up from a free news service. However you came across this trade, and of course naturally you didn't, but we're using it for our example, but however you come across a trade, a new trade idea, the next step is we have to ask ourselves, is this a good trade for the strategy that I'm using? We need to do research and analyze the position and do our due diligence to see what we might be missing on the position. A lot of times, a Power Options trial member, subscriber, will call up or send me an email. I have two actually today that came in from this morning. It says that I was looking at XYZ and I was thinking of doing this covered call. Is this a good trade? Now I can't give direct advice, but here's gonna, what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm going to walk you through if you call in or send me an email and say, I was thinking about entering this trade, is it a good idea? The first thing I naturally have to do is look at the stock chart. You told me you're interested in a bull put credit spread on a particular stock. Well, I want to see if the stock chart, whether nine days, 10 days, or three months, matches the sentiment for that strategy. I've got to take a look at the company information, recent news headlines. Is there anything that might cause me hesitation for entering the position? Any news about changing a board member, CEO scandal, pending patent lawsuit, concerns about competitors, competitors closing their doors, for example, or closing down stores. That might be something I would need to know related to the industry and the sector. For credit spreads, vertical spreads, things of that nature, I'm pretty sure I'm going to want to avoid anything that has an earnings between now and expiration. I may even want to avoid a stock that pays a dividend during the time frame of my trade, depending on the strategy. Once I've looked at the chart, the news, other information, I have a better feel for the stock itself, I may want to look at other combinations in that particular strategy to see if I can get more return if I'm more comfortable, maybe with a lower probability in a spread example, or if I want more protection, going slightly deeper in the money with a covered call, lower strike prices for a bull put credit spread, for example. And then lastly, you always want to take a look at the profit and loss chart for your position. Not only to see what it looks like graphically in your mind, to know what your risk is and see it visually, but also the ability to run what-if scenarios. What if the stock falls five or six points between now and expiration? What if it falls between my strike prices in the next six days? What could I expect as far as a loss? Or would I still be at potentially a positive return and you can use that to help you set up stops or trigger points in power options or in your broker to manage or adjust the position. Now that seems very simple. It's a simple outline. It doesn't seem very in-depth, but this is the same process that I use for any trade I'm getting into. Or, of course, any trade that's presented by a customer or someone who emails in. I will also follow those same steps for management. Meaning that if a customer calls in and says, I just adjusted this bull put spread, what could I have done differently and how would that have panned out? Or I'm considering adjusting the spread because my net credit is twice, the debit to close, excuse me, is twice what I originally collected. Well, the first thing I have to do is look at the stock chart. I don't think it'd be a good idea to just roll down the strike prices to a new bull put spread if the stock looks like it's in a bearish mode. You'd want to do a different adjustment. We'd also want to see the why behind why the stock is moving against your initial sentiment. Is there any events coming up that could cause the stock to swing wildly against you? So whether we're looking at a new position or whether we're looking at managing a position, what we want to do is make sure we walk through those same steps to know what's going on rather than just knee-jerk reaction, hey, the stock hit my price, I'm going to adjust it. Now, I apologize for this last sentence. This was from an older webinar, and it should have been corrected. I thought I had corrected it. It didn't. We're going to stay with the EOG example. So I'd mentioned my very first step when analyzing a new position, whether I came across it from a news source, from a recommendation, I'm looking at one of your trades, or I found it on my screen in my search, is we're going to look at the stock chart. Now, we use big charts, Ernie, myself, and others here, to analyze the position. You can link directly to it from Power Options. 
I tend to look at a three to six months chart and I like to see the Bollinger Bands. That's the red sort of moving upper and lower bands that we see on the example. And the Bollinger Bands are based on a 20-day movement. So naturally, I'm also going to select the SMA20 at the same time. Oh, sorry, folks. There we go. So I'm going to have to take a look at the Bollinger Bands and the SMA20 gives me a gauge of where the stock is in relation to the Bollinger Bands. If it's having a lower band breakout, bouncing off the lower band, or if it's been riding the upper range. I want to follow the MACD for crossovers. Look for positions that might show a negative bias or might show a positive bias for the particular situation. Also, I could use the RSI, volume, and other criteria as well. So what am I looking at here? Let me clear up those drawings I just made. What am I looking at here for EOG? As of this morning, when it came up in my search, the stock had been riding the upper Bollinger Band, is still up near the top, and is holding around 130. This mark here, I just drew on it. Remember, that's the short put strike price, the pivot point for my bull put spread. We are selling a 124, and we are opening a 121. I'm not worried about the 121. I'm worried about this point here. And we see that the 20-day moving average is above my short put strike price, stocks wide range above it, and we've been riding a positive MACD crossover. But a little hesitation there, isn't there? Starting to get closer together. It's starting to pull back a little bit and show some weakness. This was, of course, as of 10 o'clock this morning. I like to keep the data fresh for our webinars. All right. So does have a chart that I'm interested in. And see that 124 line here? The last time it was hit was... You know, it was below that point, was in September when it was condensing and just had that MACD crossover, so it looks like a good point. Now, why these settings? Well, typically if I'm looking for any bullish position, a covered call, naked put, bull put credit spread or bull call debit spread, calendar put spread, married put position, standard collar, and so forth, I want a stock that's trading above the 20-day moving average or the 50-day moving average, depending on your time frame. This was a shorter-term trade. It's only 9, 10 days out in time, so I'm using the 20-day. If I'm looking for a long call, I'm probably looking more for a stock that has recently had a Bollinger Band breakout, where it jumped above the Bollinger Bands and then closed above it the next day, and it's been pushing up above that Bollinger Band. This stock didn't really show that, but for a bull put credit spread, it still looked okay. I want to see that recent positive MACD crossover, where the MACD is above the signal line, and the continued move in the MACD, continued strength. I'd want to see upward trending RSI and consistent or increasing volume if possible. I want others to be interested in this stock. Now, sure, everyone else can see the same criteria I'm looking at. You can say, well, it's had its run, so it's time to take a breather. Well, that also goes down to the market sentiment. If I felt the market was taking a break and needed a breather, well, I might be looking at bear calls, buying long puts, a different strategy at this time. Well, that comes down to your sentiment. And we're just talking about for this specific bull put, what would I look for? And we saw that it already kind of matched it, but with these settings I'd use on big charts, does EOG match consistently? Well, we are above the SMA20. Current stock price is above the SMA20, although it's been pulling back. At the same time, my short put strike price, remember, is also below the 20-day moving average. That's good. The MACD is positive and has been running for about almost a month now after that recent crossover. Of course, here, right when it jumped above the SMA20 and the MACD turned to a positive crossover, that would have been a great entry point for married put long stock position, buying a long call, I could have set that criteria in power options very easily to find that trade on this day, if I looked on that day. But I could have found it the next day. The next day still would have been a good time. But again, there's some concerns here that the MACD is starting to close. The RSI is going negative, and volume was steady and increasing. But of course, this morning, it's only been a couple hours in the trading day, so we see a decrease. But it has pulled back a little, but still been moving up the last three days. Okay, so there's not a lot of concerns, but things I'm worried about here if I was entering this particular position. Now, 
that's what we tend to use. And you saw just kind of an example of why we tend to use that. We have other presentations on looking at the MACD and the Bollinger Bands and settings for the Bollinger Bands and long call and other things. But with a quick link from power options to big charts, you can also put in other things that you might use. Parabolic SAR, moving average envelopes, similar to the Bollinger Bands a little bit. Uh, if you want to see earnings, splits, dividends, or events, other indicators, the Williams percent R. You might use fast or slow stochastic, percent short interest, rolling EPS, and money flow. And what I showed is just typically what Ernie, myself, other staff, and of course other power options users put into their criteria for big charts. You probably use a different charting service, and that's perfectly fine. But remember, whenever you're entering a new trade or you're managing a trade, take a look at the chart and make sure the criteria that you use for opening a new position all match. Don't be lured just by the highest return or the highest probability. But make sure first, that's important, needs to match your trading plan, but make sure the chart still matches what you want for the strategy. Otherwise, what's the point of trading it? All right, so we have some concerns on the chart, but nothing that really pushed us out of the trade yet. So what's next? Well, now I want to go that step further. I want to see the company information, the news, the profile. What does this company do? Where are they located? How many employees do they have? Just get a size of the company and an idea of a background and what industry and sector they're in. If I see they're in a particular industry or sector, let's say retail, for example, that's been falling over the past week or two, although this stock has been strong, now I need to know why this one's outperforming the others, or is it just lagging and it's going to catch up to it soon? Headlines you should know. Again, a pending patent lawsuit. Conversations about fear of earnings coming up, um, low cash savings going into an earnings or things of that nature. Anything about a CEO, boardroom scandal, anything of that nature, changing of the board, is it a potential buyout opportunity? Okay. Earnings and events coming up, and what were the last earnings? You want to see maybe a stock that has had positive earnings the last two or three times. And there's more for balance sheets and indicators. Now, most of this you won't see in a chart, but it helps you to avoid uncertainty. The chart can look good, but if there's something pending that can cause a problem for the stock, it might not be something I'd want to be in for a credit spread and carrying an 8 to 1, 7 to 1 risk reward ratio. All right. So we go through all that. I'm not going to spend the time going through, but we check out the news. We check out the headlines. Nothing there to cause us hesitation, no whammies. Now I want to look at an overall view of the stock. I've gone through most of it, but there's three quick things I usually look at directly from Power Options after I've taken a look at the news headlines. What I'm going to do is just go to that research tool and the stock research. This allows me to see the next earnings, earnings per share growth, dividends. Is there a dividend and is it coming up? growth, and more. Also can check out the volatilities, simple moving averages, broker recommendations. There's a lot. So I'll use that more information button on the search. I'm going to go to research and stock research. Well, what am I looking for on this page? It shows a lot of data, everything from one-year ranges, current range, market cap, days above the 20-day, 50-day, and 100-day moving average, and more. But really what my eyes tend to go to right away is sort of the earnings per share growth, the one-year range. We see at the top was at 133.53, so it's at the peak of its one-year range. You know, sales peg ratio, but really I'm looking at the earnings per share growth, one-year range. I see the RSI down there, but of course, important, next earnings. All right, it's confirmed after market November 1st here. That's great. Doesn't affect my October 19th spread. Last dividend was $0.22, cents, and the next ex-dividend date is October 16th. That might be a concern for me. It'd be good for a covered call, but if I sell the October 19th in the money covered call, I'm likely going to get assigned early before the dividend comes in, so I shouldn't plan on that. If I'm out of the money on a covered call, hey, I can take the dividend, but I might also expect the stock to pull back a little bit on the 16th from the dividend payment which is also maybe a concern for my bull put spread. Now, it's only $0.22, cents, but if there's a pullback of $0.50 cents or $0.60, cents, I have to keep that in mind that that didn't fall because the stock necessarily changed, that it's due to the dividend. 
And of course, over here, we can see the volatility for this position. That's good. It's not overly volatile. And some might say that you want to look for more volatility when you're trading a credit spread, for example. But I want as less movement as possible as long as the spread matches the credit I want and the return I want from my trading plan. And I want something that shoots around wildly. Yes, I can get a better return in that situation, but I have a better chance of the stock fluctuating wildly against me in one direction or the other. All right, so that's what I look for in the stock research page. Of course, there's a lot of other information that's very useful here. There's also broker recommendations and more, held by institution, short interest, uh, total put call and volume and total option volume, total put and call open interest and the uh, open interest ratio if you use that. A lot of good detail here to get a bird's eye view of what's going on with the stock, despite the fact, I'm sorry, including, you know, sector, industry, and more. All right. So I do have a positive earnings. That's what I'm looking for. I do have a dividend coming up, but might not affect this strategy too much. Now, really, we know what we need to know. The chart matched most of our needs. It's not the perfect trade, but it still didn't see anything that was overly negative related to the volume of the RSI and the MACD, just some concerns. We didn't see anything in the news. The profile matched what we needed. We might have looked at competitors. And remember, this position has a 9.5% return for 10 days, 86% probability as we were looking at it at around 945, 950 this morning. But the ex-dividend date is in six days. That's a concern. On the page, let me go back one. I'm sorry, I wanted to point this out here. In the SMAs, we saw that the 20-day is above the short put strike we would use, but the 50-day moving average is below it. And I know many of you look for positions where the 50-day might be above the 100-day for long stock positions, collars, married puts, or more. In this case, the 100-day is just above the 50. So that might be something that might cause hesitation and you'd be able to see it right here, okay? So bring that up because the SMA 50 was below the 100. That might be a concern for you. But they were really close. They're only 12 cents off, so maybe we got some concerns, not the perfect trade. We'll talk about that in a moment. But what have we done now? We've we found a position. We looked at the chart. We looked at the other information. It's not the perfect trade, but it still looks good to match our criteria that what we were looking for. But maybe now that I've looked at the chart, maybe now that I've seen some of the competitors' information, I still like this stock, but maybe I want a little bit more protection. I want a little bit more security. Also, for a bull put spread, highlighted in red here, we see our position, the 124, 121. What we're looking at here is one of our other tools. It's the spread chain tool. We can also link to what's called the search by symbol so I can see the other combinations and gauge, do they still match what I want? Can I get higher protection and still get the return that I want from my trading plan on a nine-day trade? And as we can see, the stock's fluctuating. At this time, at around 10.15, the stock had pulled back from when we saw it at 130.10 down to 128.85. Now my spread still is an 82% probability. The return jumped up a little bit because we can get a little better net credit. But I still like this stock, but maybe I want to stay with that 85% probability or greater. I might gravitate, in this case, to the 123, 120, still with a 28 cent net credit and a 10.3% return. Now, if I'm still neutral to bullish and I think the stock's going to recover, both of these trades are probably still pretty good. But if I want to start off with a little bit more cushion, go a little bit lower. If I want it to be in the 90% probability, I still feel that I want to open the spread on EOG, but I want a little bit more protection, I can still be at around 7.9% return, 90% probability with the 122-119 strike. Just keeping it at three strikes now for uh ease of presentation rather than bouncing around to one or two, you would have already set that already based on what structure you like to use for your strike differences. Now, when I'm looking at a spread on the search or whether I'm looking at any vertical spread, I'll use that more information button to link to the midpoint spread chain or I'll go to the search by symbol. Usually the midpoint spread chain is better because I can customize it a little bit more based on return, probability, 
You can see expiration dates here. I can just click on which expiration date I want and more. The search by symbol tool would also show me other combinations as well. But if you're doing covered calls on power options or naked puts, I'd link to the option chain. Our chain shows you the percent return if assigned, downside protection, and other return values you'd want to see for a covered call for all the different strikes. The naked put, of course, you'll be able to see the percent naked yield, percent to break even, all on the option chain so you can easily compare which one best suits your needs after you've looked at the chart and other information. For spreads, use the spread chain and that also allows you to compare the parity view. We can look at the bull put credit compared to the bull call debit to see which one gives me the best bang for the buck, the parity trades. If you're looking at collars, married puts, or calendars, use the search by symbol tool to evaluate other strikes at this step in the process. If you're buying calls or buying puts or maybe doing straddles or strangles, long straddles or strangles, link to the long option finder to see which option would give you the best return if the stock hits a certain target price. Okay, so after looking at all this information, walking through it myself or walking through it with a customer, let's say the customer decides to go with that new 86% probability, 10.3% return using the 123-120 bull put spread at that time as opposed to the 124-121 that initially came up. Now what our next step is, looked at the stock, company information, compared other strikes, looked at the research tool to see if there are any gotchas out there we might not see on the chart. Now I'm going to link to the profit and loss chart to get that bird's eye view, but at the same time run my what-if scenarios for the position and more. So we take a look at our bull put spread. Here's our profit and loss chart for EOG, trading at the time at 130.10. Now this is the new trade. After the stock had fallen a little bit at the time, we're selling, remember now, the 123 and buying the 120. Okay, so there's our two strikes. We still have that 28 cent net credit, 10.3% return, and the new 86% probability. We're just one strike lower. Well, this gives me the bird's eye view. I know I'm taking in 28 cents, but I also have to remember that if something drastic happens in the next few days, unexpectedly, EOG drops 10 points, my worst case scenario, of course, the monetary risk on the position, is going to be that three point strike difference minus the 28. So we can lose about two, whoop, that was extended there, sorry, 272 on the position. So we're close to that nine to one risk reward ratio. What I'd expect with a credit spread with an 86% probability. But we know the stock can fluctuate. So I want to know in the next five or six days, close to that ex-dividend date, what happens if the stock falls to maybe that 1%, half a percent above my short put strike price? What if it drops to 124? Well, this allows me to get a gauge that if the stock falls down near one of my trigger points, halfway between now and expiration, I might expect a loss of about 37 cents or so. That's taking into account the original net credit. So it's showing me here I'm going to lose 15 cents on the short put. Theoretical value around $78. So I'm going to pay 78 cents to buy to close it. That's a 15 cent loss from the 63 cents I received. And my long put is only going to be worth about $13. So I'm going to lose 22 there. So it's a 37. Okay just about one and a half to one over the original net credit of 28 cents. Now, one and a third, really. Okay, so that's not bad. That might be a good trigger point if it happens within the next couple of days. What if tomorrow, though, we see another unexpected decline in some of our positions and an EOG, the market opens down again tomorrow? Well, I can easily just change this and say, what would happen on 10-11 if my stock fell to 124, 125? And this will give you a gauge of what you could expect your expected gain or expected loss to be in that scenario. And of course, I'd also compare it to what if it jumps up to 134 or 135 in the next four or five days, see what my gain would be, and might I use that as a trigger to potentially get out of this spread with 60% or 70% of what I expected to make of the full 28 cent profit on that position? Or might it be time to adjust? 
Now, another thing we'll be able to do on the profit and loss chart, other than getting our bird's eye view, which does, of course, show us the hockey stick graph at expiration, and the curved red line is showing you the profit and loss at the halfway point with your break even at expiration and the current stock price shown as well. What we can also do is make adjustments to our initial position. So I can evaluate a new position in the profit and loss chart. I'm looking at the 123, 120 now. What would it look like with the 123, 121? I can simply clear out the 120, add the 121 in. I'm going to get a lower credit, but it might be a higher potential return based on the lower margin requirement. What about lower, 122, 120? Well, higher probability, lower credit, and lower return. Is the larger spread worth it? Is it worth it to do maybe a 123, 118 spread for a higher net credit, but having a higher margin? Or is a smaller spread worth it, doing just a one-point spread for this particular scenario? You can run all those different examples while you're on the profit loss chart to see which one stands out to you as the most. Now, evaluate new. Normally, by this point, you've decided this is the one that you've wanted, but maybe you're just looking for a little bit extra protection again. Maybe you want to see, well, why did I see a three-point spread in the search? Why wasn't a two- or a one-point spread? Let me look at what those would look like in this scenario. For other strategies, you know, if I'm looking at a covered call position, I'm going to link to the profit loss chart, check out a collar. Maybe a covered combination. Can I increase my return by selling a naked put? And is it worth it with the increased margin? Collar is probably a better idea to add protection if I'm more hesitant on the market, but I still like this stock. Or you're looking at a naked put trade. If you want to add a little bit more, add that extra out of the money put. Convert it to a bull put or maybe a calendar put spread. If you're looking at a long call, Compare quickly, just add another short call to see what would the bull call debit look like or maybe a ratio spread or a calendar call. Married put might look at a collar or the married put plus a bear call spread to generate income right away. Bear call, I might adjust it as I did with the bull put, adjust the strike slightly, run the what-if scenarios. Iron condor might tweak the strikes one direction or the other. Straddle or strangle, you might evaluate if a Converting the short or long straddle or strangle is worth converting to a butterfly, maybe a double diagonal, and still run the what ifs in that case to see which one best suits your needs. Now, as I mentioned, seems pretty simple. That's our process, whether we're opening a new trade, evaluating a trade that you ask me about via email or on the phone, or if you're asking me how might I manage this position, I have to look at all of that first to kind of gauge, well, if you're in a bull put and it's been going against you, why is it going against you? What does the chart look like? And if it looks like it's still bearish, I don't want to consider maybe just rolling that bull put down and strike. I don't want to consider maybe just moving the short strike if it looks like it's still going to fall. I'm going to look for a way to convert that bullish spread into a bearish spread to follow the new trend or potentially just get out of the position, take the loss if it's small, and then try to make it back on a stock that's showing a better trend for your particular strategy that you're using. There might have been something in the news that's causing the downturn. Earnings or dividends coming up, might be another reason to avoid it. Other strikes for more protection return. And then always, always look at the profit and loss chart. A lot of times you'll be surprised. A customer will call in and say, hey, I was looking at this position. I've got this current position open and I'm thinking about managing it. Or, I'm considering of opening this ratio backspread position. Do you think that's a good idea? And they haven't even looked at the profit and loss chart yet. It doesn't even really match what they're trying to do. They just think it's a good idea because they read it somewhere that it could outperform a bear call spread or offer more security, the ratio spread over a bear call spread, for example, or a bull call debit. But then I get them to look at the chart and they say, oh yeah, that's not really what I want for this trade. So always make sure you look at it first so you can know that, it, yes, this is what I want. I know it sounds pretty basic, but you'd be surprised how many people present an idea or a management idea and they haven't looked at it themselves yet. And of course, using the quick links on power options, you can access all of that information right away. As we talked about last week when we presented the search tool, most of this is done for me. 
when I look for a new trade, I'm going to set up the search to limit down the universe of options to what I want. In bull puts, for example, finding EOG, I'm already looking for stocks that have that positive MACD crossover or trading above the 20-day moving average where the RSI is above a certain range, not necessarily increasing or decreasing. It's got to have a certain volume. And yes, I want that same probability, net credit, and the difference in strike prices that I look for. So although most of that is done for me, I still may run through the process of looking at other strikes after I've looked at the stock chart and the other information. And then I'm going to run through those steps again. If the first one doesn't match my needs, the first result in my search comes up, or that trade that was offered to you from a trade selection service or recommendation service, if the chart, if the other information, you find some news on it you don't like doesn't match, just move on to the next one, run the steps again. Okay, so again, very simple. When opening a new trade, if a trigger point is hit, you need to manage. And if you use power options or not, if you need to manage it, start over just from scratch. Look at the stock chart. Does it follow the sentiment of what you're trying to manage to or the position that you're opening? Anything in the headlines that might cause you hesitation. In some strategies, you're going to want to avoid earnings or a dividend. In some strategies, you're going to look for earnings, such as long straddles or long strangles, or a dividend just out of the money covered calls on a long-term holding that you want to increase the dividend like payment, you still want to stay slightly out of the money. You're going to look at the search by symbol tool or the option chain to compare other strikes to see which one makes you feel the best on that particular security and then take a look at the profit and loss chart to run your what ifs. All right. And of course, we're going to limit our universe first using the search tool and power options for your particular strategy where you can screen for the stock and the option at the same time. Okay, You'll follow the same steps, quickly find the trade that matches your goals and your risk threshold. Well, of course, then you're going to place the trade and then track it with your broker and the power options portfolio tools. And we're going to run through another example of that just from scratch. But what I want to know right now is what option strategies are you currently trading? Researching, trading, paper trading even, what are you actively looking at right now for options positions? Are you focusing on covered calls or cash secured naked puts? They're sort of parity trades of one another. Are you looking at the bull put credit, bear call credit, vertical spreads, condors? Uh, I'm sorry, are you looking at call and put buying? That would include buying straddles or strangles, rounds earnings, or just straddles and strangles in general. Are you focused on married put positions, collars, sort of the protected long stock positions? Or, of course, are you looking at something else? Just let me know. Send me uh, the idea or the strategy you're using in the question pod there. So I'm going to leave this open for just about a minute or so. Okay, I've got a... Close to about 70% vote. I'm going to leave it open for another 10 seconds. And then we'll just go ahead and uh, move on there. All right. So let's go ahead and close that. And I'll share the results of there. So 14% of you are doing the covered calls, naked puts. 50% of you are doing the vertical spreads. 7% uh, are doing call buying, and 29% uh, are doing married put positions as well. Okay, so we may not have the time to do all four, but we're going to do our best. We're just going to walk through pretty much the same process if I was opening a new position today. Honestly, with market conditions the way they are, I'm probably looking at a standard collar or a married put to keep single-digit risk at this point. I've already got my bull puts open, and we walk through what I would do for a bull put spread or a bear call spread already shown. But in any case, let's take a break here very quickly. We're just going to navigate over to the Power Options suite of tools. Drag that over to our better view here. All right, so let's go ahead and show it. There we go. Back to square one. All right, so what we're looking at, of course, here is the Power Options free trial. Uh, you can get a free 14-day free trial with just name and email address. You don't need to add, add any billing information. And any strategy, where I'm going to start? 
Now we can start reviewing bull puts. It'll be very quickly. What would I do? I'm going to go to the bull put credit spread tab and I'm going to click on the search to find new positions. Now my starting point is going to be the default power options screen that we use called bull put weekly. It's one that I've tested. This is one that I started off with this morning. Now I am looking at a delayed on the trial account. I'm not in real time. But very interestingly enough, we see that we have six potential trades from this list, and EOG is not one of them. This morning, when I ran it, of course, at, um, I apologize, in about 9.40, 9.45, I had Consolation, Anthem, CXO, and EOG. Those were the four, but now we have the new positions that came in. So this is my starting point. If I was opening a new bull put today, and I'm not, and you should not take this as a direct recommendation or suggestion, I have my positions here. Constellation Brands, Stars is at the top, 11.1% return, 25 cent net credit with an 87.9% probability above. I'm sorting by return, that's why the highest probabilities are at the bottom, because they tend to offer the lowest return. So I know it matches my criteria. I know it matches my return, probability, minimum net credit for a 9-10 day trade. Also in the search, what I've set up, there's the probability. Range out of the money, minimum return, minimum net credit. Strike difference, there's a reason why that's there. We talked about that on the eight ways to manage a bull put spread presentation from a week or so ago. If I go to technicals, what do I see? I am looking for stocks above the SMA 20 already. I know it's going to be there on the chart. I am looking for stocks that have crossed the MACD signal by at least three days. If I wanted to see positions that just recently had the crossover, I'd change this and look for ones that have crossed within the last two days or less, three days or less. Okay? So I know these stocks already match the technicals that I want, already match the options criteria that I want. I'm avoiding earnings between now and expiration. And if I wanted to, again, I'd mentioned that positive earnings per share growth when we were looking at the uh, stock research tool, which we'll look at in a minute, but I could narrow this down further, put that in. If I wanted to look at a certain market cap or option volume, put that in as well. See if that takes anything out for us, because it's something I would look for. So I want to make sure it's in my search to begin with. All right, so Constellation Good still is a positive earnings per share growth. It's still there. What are my steps? First things first. Let's go to the More Information button. I'm going to go to Charts, and I want to go to Big Charts. Today is a down day. I have to accept that, but what are we seeing? It's a little bit bigger view now. MACD has been really strong. Crossover in the last four, whoops, sorry, folks, crossover in the last four or five days from that spike. You see over here that I'm just pulled down below the upper band, but it's still well above the 20-day moving average, and the strike price, I think, that we were looking at was also below the 20-day moving average. It's pretty important. Now over on the right-hand side, this is where you can set your different criteria you'd want on big charts and you can store those settings down here. It's already saved for me when I come to it. But again, of course, we could always add oh, the other ones here. As I mentioned, if I want to look at RSI or volume, stochastic, Williams percent R or more, however you like to use it, you can customize it based on that view. Of course, we're using the big screen uh, there, big chart, easier to view. And again, just like before, we've got those two little issues that we have. We've got a MACD where we want it, but it's leveling off. We're above the 20 day, been a, riding that upper Bollinger Band. Volume has been decreasing since that big earnings spike, most likely, and the RSI has started to push back down, as we saw with EOG. A concern? But the other ones are still doing what we want. But again, if that was specifically my needs, that I wanted to see a positive RSI, I wanted to see still an increasing MACD, and I wanted to see positive volume, I would just stop with Constellation and move on to Pioneer. Once again, go to Charts, take a look at Big Charts, and that's just the process. Does this better match what I'd want to see? Of course. As I said, it's been a down day, so all of the MACDs are hesitating and the RSIs are pulling back. Might look at a bearish strategy as well, depending on my further outlook, or if today, is, in my opinion, is just an anomaly. Not saying it is, but 
that's what I'd have to gauge. All right, so after we look at the chart, what would we do next? We'd go to the company information. I'm going to take a look at the news, earnings and events. Really the news most important, but I can look at the profile too to make sure what Constellation Brands does and what they're involved with, and then take a look at some of their competitors as well. I want to take a look at that stock research tool. I want to see all the information available and how it relates to my strike prices, the 20-day and 50-day moving average above our 215 strike price that we're looking to sell. Do we have dividends coming up as we did with EOG? Okay. Well, next dividend date's 11.8 or 11.5, excuse me. That's going to be beyond my expiration. That's good. The SMAs, 216. That's good. SMA 50 though is below the 215 strike price. And again, we see this one here that the 50 day is below the 100 day. That might cause some of you hesitation. But the earnings per share growth is positive. The broker recommendation looks pretty good if you use that. You can see the last earnings surprise and more other information that we have here available. Okay, so now of course we're not going to spend time going through the headlines. It, it is quick view. I just go to news and I just scroll through maybe the last 10 or 15 to see if there's any information or any articles out there. And then as we did before, I'd go to the midpoint spread chain to look at other examples of the strike differences. Maybe there's a different probability that I'm more comfortable with. Is there a 90% probability using the 212, for example, the 212 and a half, 210? What would that look like for my position? That might be a good idea as well, depending on what I was interested in. Now, let's just take a look. Let's just go to either midpoint or search by symbol. Let's go to search by symbol real quick. So that's a lot of spreads there, but we mentioned here's all our 215 combinations with the different returns, 11.1 still there, but the 212, 210, it's only a 4.2% return, 10 cent net credit. Not worth it, even though it has better than 90% probability. That's why I didn't see it on my search. So in this case, I'm likely sticking straight on if I was to make this trade with the 215, 212 and a half and that 87, 88% probability. Okay. And then last but not least, we've compared the others. We've looked at the stock information. Then I would go ahead and go to the profit and loss chart for the position. Simple graphical view. See where the stock is now at 223. Break even is 214.75. Pretty decent distance. Short put though where I'd look to manage is around 215. And I can run my what if scenarios. No one's saying necessarily a 10% drop, but what if we get a 10 point drop. It does exceed our expectations or go beyond our worst fears and we see a 10 point drop in the next few days. By Friday, it drops down to 213 on the 12th. Leave volatility the same. Volatility might increase, but let's just take a look. Well, I know my full risk is 225, so at this point if the stock fell to 213, just below my break even in the next two days, I'd still be only a loss about 50% of the max loss of the spread. Definitely be time to trigger it or manage it, but I'd probably manage here if the stock dropped to around 216 or 215.50, somewhere in that range within that one, one and a half percent rule, maybe even 216. Look to manage the position, the short option. And how would I do that? Look at the stock chart. Is it a consistent decline or something that's a blip, why did it happen? What news is in the market that caused it in the past two days to drop? Is it related to the stock or the market as a whole? That's gonna help me gauge how I might adjust it based on what my new sentiment is. Do I wanna convert this bull to a bear spread? Do I just wanna get out of it with a 50% loss? Or do I think this is an overreaction and the market's gonna recover? Then I may just move the strike prices down and make adjustments in that fashion, okay? Uh, Cameron, I can't really answer this question. This is a question you have to answer for yourself. Cameron says, Mike, how many contracts would you buy with a 25 cent profit? That's not how I do it, okay? All of what we're talking about here is the ways to research and analyze the position, Cameron. And before we talked about using the search tool, but when you get into your trading plan, that dictates how many contracts you trade not the profit, 
Well, the profit is irrelevant. It's not irrelevant, but it has the minimum profit I want, and it's the return that I want, 11.1% on the margin. That's what I want. What's important here to me is the risk or the margin. Why? Because you've heard me say multiple times that my portfolio breakdown at any given time is around 50% married put positions to be conservative. 15 to 20 percent of my portfolio is maybe in bull puts. 15 to 20 is in diagonal spreads, whether calendar call or calendar put based on my market sentiment. 10 percent or so might be in those long straddles for earnings, a smaller amount, and then maybe whatever is left in a couple collars or maybe a couple of other positions, maybe a bear call spread in addition to bull puts depending on my market outlook, or 5% that I'm allocating to options trades might be in VIX calls one month out in case there is an unexpected downturn and an increase in volatility, which honestly has worked well for that portion of my portfolio in the past four days. So what is it here? 15% of my portfolio is in bull put spreads. Okay, so let's just say that you're allocating $50,000 to options trading. Okay, I'm just going to do this real quick. So 7,500, that's not my actual amount, okay, but 7,500 in that case would be allocated to bull put spreads. And in general, I'm not just opening one when it comes time for me to open a new position, I'm opening maybe two or three bull put spreads, let's say three. So I have to allocate a third of that to each position. So it's going to be about 2,500. And on my two and a half point spread, if I'm allocating 2,500, if that is my breakdown, okay, I'd be doing 10 contracts of that position, 2,500, 2,250 is allocated to there, taking in $250 on a risk of 2,250, all right? That's based on that allocation. Now, what happens if I'm wrong and the stock pulls all the way against me? Remember, I've only put in the 2,500. I will occasionally take a loss 60, 70 percent on a bull put spread for an unexpected event. Rather than manage it, I might just close it and move on. This is more of a strategy discussion. But remember, that 2,500 I've got invested in this position, or 2,250, that is only 5 percent of the $50,000 total allocated to the portfolio. So even if I hit full loss on this position from an unexpected event, I've only lost 5% of my total portfolio. Bulk of my portfolio is hedged to single digit risks or bulletproof with the radioactive trading, then the calendar spreads and more. Okay? So it's not saying, ooh, it's a 20 cent net credit, I want $500, so let me trade 20 contracts. No, that's trading against my plan. If it's even only a 10 cent premium on a one point difference, and I'm allocating $2,000 to it in a $50,000 account, 5% of my total portfolio, no, I'd be doing 20 contracts, okay? That's what I'm looking at there. It's not about the moneyness, in my opinion. It is about the trading plan. And in, in my opinion, no spread. I don't care if you're doing condors. I don't care if you're doing bull puts. I don't care if you're doing bear calls. I don't care if you're doing really calendar calls. But no spread where you can potentially lose 70 to 80% of what you invested in by a sudden turn in the market or an unexpected event nothing should represent really more than four or five percent of your total portfolio value in the worst case, okay? Uh, ben, um, uh, I don't have a good answer for you on this one. I think I emailed you before based on your, your answer you put on the last one. Uh, you said that you got good information. I'm glad you're getting good information as a transcript. I don't really have a tool uh, that transcribes, um, I don't have a good tool that transcribes the audio from these presentations into um, a text uh, thing. But Ben, what I'll try to do for you maybe later this week or hopefully at the beginning of the week is I'll try to rehash this in a blog based on the steps and sort of an outline and bullet points of the five steps we would do in there between it. We'll have that available for you probably next week. I've got uh, two other webinars this week, so I don't know if I have the time, but Ben, I'll try to get that for you. Uh, Mike said, is there any way to sort by a 13 to 1, I guess you're saying, risk-reward ratio? Yeah. Now remember, I said mine was a, about a nine to one risk reward ratio, okay? And so that sort of looks at a return. When you're sorting by credit spreads, Mike, 
you're looking at a position, the return that you're seeing on the portfolio is, or on the search, I apologize, on the search, this return is based on net credit divided by the difference in the strike prices, okay? So the credit here divided by the difference in the strike price, a very small minimum return here in this case, but you could naturally increase that. So a 13 to one risk reward ratio would put you where? Right, what would that roughly be? And it's not 13, you know, so it's a one reward divided by a 13 risk, that would be about a 7.7% .7 return. So that would be your minimum, right? You could put that in 7.7% .7 or more. Um, Sam, you bring up an interesting question. Oh, one to three. Okay, 30% return, Mike. I'm sorry, one to three, 30% return. <laughs> so you could do that, but what's going to happen? You're not going to have an 85% probability. You're not going to be 3% out of the money on a four or five day trade in that case, okay? Okay, Mike, ask the question. I'm, I'm going to get, I'm sorry, I'm going to get to... Um, Say my apologies, gonna to get to you one second, but let me go back to Mike here. It says, why not layer the sell strike in three different lengths? That's not my plan. That's that's never been how I've approached it. I'll do three spreads that I open on a Monday for my strategy, 10 to 14 days out. I'll manage those three spreads, but I'm not gonna enter a spread, and then if the stock moves up as I want, enter another bull put and then enter another. Why? Because if I'm wrong and it comes back down, I've wiped out three legs. And that's not my trading plan. I just like to do three separate ones, place them and do it. Okay, that's not my strategy. I don't want to put too much into one position. Okay, I'm going to diversify that allocation into, and I don't do ratio spreads if that's what you're asking, Mike. I don't do ratio spreads. Okay, all right. Personal preference, really, Mike, and I, I've seen some investors prove to me that they've had better success with ratio spreads than standard bull puts. And I've had other investors show me that doing ratio backspreads actually performed worse than what I was doing because of the structure of the trade. And I might have said that in another webinar where they say, oh, if it falls, I'm still going to make a profit. But yeah, you only make the peak profit if it's right at this one point, and then you still have a loss to the upside when doing a backspread. And unfortunately, 50 to 60% of the time, they're making that very minimum gain. They're hardly ever getting that upper gain. I'm still right 83, 88% of the time, sometimes 93% of the time, it's averaging around 91% over 2018 with my bull put spreads. So the ratio spread construct is not going to perform better to me than what I'm doing right now, unless I picked ratio call spreads going the right direction, but I only do that in the married put approach. Okay, Sam H., uh, your question here, how come you don't add the risk column to the search screen? Well, that's sort of the margin requirement. Okay, the max risk is here, monetary. It's not a percentage. Okay, so if I was, I know I do two point spreads or greater. Okay, but if I only wanted to see a maximum risk, like you saw, of 250, I'd put that in. Okay, it's only going to show me 250 or less. It's right there. Why is there not a percentage in here? Because any bull put spread, credit spread that you open is a 100% risk. That's what you could lose. Okay, so there's no point in putting that in because there's no credit spread that's only going to offer you a 10% or 12% loss. Any spread you open has the chance of 100% loss of what you invested into the margin requirement, just like a long call. You don't see risk in the long call search screen because you're risking 100% of what you invested. You can limit it by the ask price. You can limit it by the debit of those positions and a covered call. Your maximum risk is 100% of the net debit, stock price minus the call premium. Okay, What you look for in a covered call is downside protection, how far the stock can fall before you're technically losing money on the position, or on a naked put, the percent to break even. Okay, So the risk here, the maximum risk, is the difference in the strike prices minus the net credit, or the margin requirement as well. This is a strategy discussion again. It's going off, Mike. A, uh, Mike, it's um, we're going off of the the topics here. But you asked on the day of X dividend, how about placing a, a credit bear call spread? Because it's already priced in, um, believe it or not. So you don't get a lot of good return. It's almost not worth it to do, even though the stock falls twenty or thirty cents. It's almost not worth the premium in those situations that I've seen. 
um, I could set up a bear call credit spread to do that specifically, to look for positions that have an ex-dividend coming up in the next week or before expiration and that offer me a certain return. And I could do that, but if we have a raging bull market, let's say tomorrow you've got an ex-dividend stock and it's paying 22 cent dividend as we saw with the OG and I open an at the money bear call spread, but the market reverses tomorrow and everything's up four or five points. Whoo, that's a challenge. That's a specific example because we're down today and we might recover tomorrow. We might be down again tomorrow, but we might recover tomorrow. And if that's, those stocks jump up two or $3, that bear call spread is cleaned out. I'm already at 50% loss one day in the trade. Okay, so I'm just going to scroll back here. We're going to keep on the screen for one second. I'm actually going to move over. I don't have others. I wanted covered call, so let me go ahead and add the covered call in there for you guys. And we'll just take a look at that very quickly. So add for my 23 available strategies, save our configuration. And let's just go into search for covered calls now. And the monthly picks of the day, only one comes up, star bulk carriers. Let's take a look at the weeklies picks of the day, the defaults that Ernie created based on his testing. See if we get any more results in there. Probably get a few more. Okay, Transocean, Ameren, Acadia, PBR, Gap. Interesting, Gap's the only one that's up today. Well, let's take a look. Stocks at 27.87, the October 27 and a half for October 12th on this Friday. Selling at 56 cents. There's the downside protection. 2% downside with a 0.8% return. That's for two days. That's not bad. Net premium total is not a lot. Right? We're, we're getting 56 cents, maybe 58 cents with the midpoint. But we're giving up about 37 cents. So it's not huge, but it's a two-day trade. Got to keep that in mind. So is there a maximum risk here for the covered call? No, the maximum risk is the net debit. If the stock goes to zero, I could lose all of that. Downside protection is what I'm more focused on. How far the stock can fall before I'm technically losing money on the position. Is this a good covered call? Don't know. What would I do? Stock chart. Does it, it does have a MACD crossover that's moving up. It's just pushed off the lower band there and it's just above the 20 day moving average. That's kind of tough there. You know, it's just, just had that recent decline there, but it's starting to pull back up. It is positive today on the ones on the results. Okay, so then I'd have to take a look next, folks, at what? Company information, news. Why was that recent decline happened five days ago? What was behind it? Or was it just a market movement overall? Do the research into the stock. Take a look at the bird's eye view of the earnings per share growth, PE, SMA20, SMA50, and more, as we saw earlier. Now, instead of going to the search by symbol, when I'm doing a cover call or naked put, I'm going to go to the option chain. After I've looked at the stock chart and the other information, why? Because as I mentioned, our chain shows you everything I'd want to see for a covered call. The downside protection if I bought the stock and sold this call and the return for two days. Want to be a little bit safer? Maybe go down and strike to the 27, but, you know, 50, 60 cents down. Uh, you're giving up a lot of that to the position. I'm sorry, 87 cents down. You're giving up a lot. It's only going to be 12, 15 cent net credit, but a 0.4% return for two days and 3.5. Or you like the stock. You think it's good. You think it's going to continue up because it's still growing while everything is falling. Maybe a little speculation here. Not a lot of downside protection, just half of it, but a potential 1% return. Now, I'm not. this isn't a recommendation or suggestion. I'm not saying this is a good trade, but that's why I link to the option chain. Or maybe I want to go further out. Maybe I like this better. Going out to October 19th, the 27.50 there, getting a 3.2 downside for nine days and a 2% return. That looks good. But what do I got to check? Again, make sure that earnings is not coming out between now and expiration because on the search, pulled up the 12th for us. If Gap has earnings on the 15th, 16th, or 17th, I don't want to be entering a covered call with that October 19th trade. And what did we talk about before? Going to the profit and loss chart. Now that we've done our research and analysis, run our what-if scenarios. Say to ourselves, hey, does it make sense to do a collar? Probably not with an in-the-money call, by the way. But if maybe I decided, let's say, to go out to October 19th, and I think there's room for grow, let me look at what the 28 call would look like combined with maybe the 26 put. 
Now I have a max risk. I can see a guaranteed risk on the position, 2.2 .2 to 5.1. Honestly, this doesn't match my goals. That is for a nine-day trade, but it doesn't match my goals. I usually, on a standard collar, am looking for around less than 5%. It's really close, but I'm also looking for about a 2.7, 2.8% gain on the position. It gives me that good guaranteed limited risk in case I'm wrong and it collapses. Okay, all right. So. Those are my processes for the research and analysis. But while we're here, one last thing. What didn't I check? I would have, but let's go to the research. Oh, good. 11.20 after market. Don't have to worry about that. Last X dividend date was today. Don't have to worry about that. Missed it, but hey, that's all right. So that might still be a good covered call. Wow. That's interesting, isn't it? Sorry, Mike, what did we talk about before? Here's one that if I would have opened the bear call credit spread yesterday right at the vest, say it around, well, I'll still be looking okay, but if I sold the 28 and bought the 30, because the dividend was today, the ex-dividend dates today, the stock's actually up 1.2%. Not above my short call strike price yet, but pretty close. This one didn't drop, or it dropped in the morning and then recovered. What's our day range? 2728 to 2804. So yeah, it might have dropped at the beginning, but now it's pushing itself back up. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? So that's just why I might answer that it's still maybe a 50-50 shot or so. I don't have the research on it, but even though the stock pays a dividend and it pulls back, the market conditions are there. It could still be moving up. Might not be the best trade to make, banking on it dropping because of the dividend payment, as we see today. X dividend date, 10-9-2018. It was yesterday. I'm sorry, it was yesterday. So it did drop yesterday, but now it's back up again. Okay. Um, B-O-A-L-A, -A, BOLA, I'm sorry, what is the strike of pain used for? Okay, real quick, um, the strike of pain is one of the signature tools. It's sort of like a pitting tool. Um, here's what I'm going to suggest for you real quick. I don't have the time to go into it. Sorry, click something there. Go to the free webinars. This is a public page. You can access the free webinars at any time. It's just powerop.com slash webinars dot ASP. Um, under the options tools section here, you see other things, trade recommendations, um, what is behind the search criteria, signature tools to improve your trading. Uh, that's a full presentation on looking at the market sentiment tool, stock insurance tool, uh, long option finder spread trade, and of course we do go through um, the strike of pain in there as well. And I'll try to find some other information for you. I believe the strike of pain is discussed in here. But it's a, it's a pinning tool uh, that's sort of using what's called the max pain structure to try to evaluate where the stock might be trading based on the open interest activity and the gain or loss if the stock is trading right at a certain price for options buyers and options sellers. Not wholly reliable. Um, it was more reliable back in the 80s, but with 80s and uh, early 90s, but that's why the max pain criteria was developed and the calculation was developed. This is based on the same concept. However, with more electronic trading, um, more sort of computer use and things like that, the strike of pain can still be relatively useful, not all the time, maybe only 60, 55% of the time. It's within one or one and a half percent of the strike price it selects, uh, that, that calculates, I should say, but that's only within seven to eight days to expiration. The minute you go past that, you look at something that's 30 days out, a lot's going to happen in 30 days, and the strike of pain is going to move and adjust the stock price and the open interest and the pain value adjusts for the different options. Um, but check out that webinar there on the Power Options tools, powerup.com slash webinars.asp. And on the signature tools to improve your trading, uh, we'll go through uh, some of that criteria. I'm pretty sure, even though it's not listed there, that it is discussed um, in that as well. Um, and if I find any more information on that I've written up over the years on the strike of pain, I'll let you know. But all the testing I've done, 60, 63% of the time, it's within one or one and a half percent, which I'd call a success uh, for that particular tool. But that's only reliable seven to 10 days out. And it's gotten harder to be that reliable with the advent of more weekly options and you know trying to evaluate SPY and SPX that offer now three expirations per week comes tricky. All right, well, just as I mentioned before, that's just some of the other ones that are there also. Let's see here. Ah, that's what I wanted to do. 
So, real quick, for any strategy, remember what we discussed. When opening a new trade, or if a point is when hit and you need to make an adjustment, you're going to take a look at the stock chart. You know it matches your criteria, you return your probability. Take a look at the stock chart, does it follow your sentiment? Company information news, is there anything you can't see on the chart or in the raw data for return, probability, market cap, volume, anything that could cause hesitation for entering the position, whether you're going bullish or bearish? When are the earnings and the dividend dates? The other strikes, now that you've looked at that information, say, I still like this stock, but maybe I want a little bit more protection. Or, I like this stock a lot, everything looks really good, this is what I wanted, but let me maybe take a lower probability on that spread and get a higher return. I'm going to go up a strike. A little bit dangerous, but now that you've seen everything, if you feel more comfortable, move it up the strikes. Then always look at the profit and loss chart. Run the what-if scenarios, evaluate maybe other combinations to see if they match better, what you're feeling at the time now that you've looked through the entire stock chart and more. And of course, all these tools we talk about, the easy quick links to do the research and analysis from the search, only find them on Power Options. Sure, yeah, I know you have other services to do it. We try to combine everything into one. If you haven't done so yet, go to PowerOp.com. Just put in your name and email address, and you can start your 14-day free trial. No credit card is required at all. Now, after that, our subscriptions start at $40 per month for the end-of-day service. Data is only updated at 5 o'clock, so if I'm running searches today, I'm seeing numbers from yesterday, which in a lot of stocks would be irrelevant based on the movement we've seen. Uh, the delayed service is $60 per month. Of course, we do offer real-time, and our historical services gives you access to the back-testing tools, the 20-minute delayed service plus access to the back-testing tools, and our options data goes back to April of 2006. As we discussed, want to check out other education or free material at any time, we already shared the uh, public webinars page, powerop.com slash webinars.asp. Webinars there on the tools, the option strategies, options concepts, and of course, the requested topics. Uh, that's where we archive all of our Friday open forum Q&A sessions. You can also take a look at the blog at any time, blog.powerop.com. Check us out on YouTube under Power Options. Last but not least, if you do have any questions at any time, you can feel free to send me an email, support at powerop.com. You can also reach us during market hours at 302-992-7971. Of course, um, I'm likely not going to be available for the next hour or 45 minutes. And of course, members, trial members or subscribers, you can schedule a coaching session at any time. Um, you just ask the 35 to 45 minute phone conversation with myself or Ernie. We'll walk you through the tools on the site and answer any questions that you have. Uh, Bola, looks like you had a final question. Is there a direct link to Tasty Trades plans? Um, yes, but I'm not sure when. <laughs> um, I, I've reached out to them a couple times. I've heard back from one of the gentlemen there about uh, a joint webinar, for example, perhaps, um, and we discussed that, yes, they have an API open, as does Interactive Brokers, um, but we're working in the background to get all of that together and to try to put all of that in. So you could link the trade to Tasty Trades, possibly to Robinhood, but they're not quite there yet, maybe even Interactive Brokers. We always try to set that up, and then there's always what happens to us, uh, what happens to everyone. Of course, we, we had the one set up with Options Express. Schwab didn't want them linking to it once they bought it out. Um, we were in the process of getting one set up with Trade Monster. They were bought out by Options House, and then Ally, no, not Ally, someone else bought them out. Um, we were having a link with uh, Trade King, bought out by Ally Invest. Still a good company. They just uh, didn't want anything to link to them. And then, of course, Thinkorswim, TD Ameritrade, they don't want to play well with others. Uh, so that's where we're at right now, but um, uh, that's where we go. Um, Mike uh, asked a general question, what broker is your choice? To be honest, right now I'm at Fidelity and Options Express. Um, Fidelity, I, I have no problems with. Um, I, I'd like to have more ability to more trade entries for spreads and things of that nature, specifically for my calendar spreads. But I'm okay with them. I always get good fill prices. I don't have any issues. The prices are sort of competitive. Remember when everyone dropped about a year ago, so they're still in that range. Um, I've been looking at Robinhood, honestly. Um, but I haven't really swung over to them. I really liked uh, Options Monsters slash Trades Monsters platform, and I was going to transfer what I had at Options Express over to them, but when they got bought out by Options House and the rumor was they were going to get bought out as well, I just backed off. 
and I thought it was too much and I liked the tools there and I didn't want the tools to be messed with if I was putting my money there. Um, I mentioned I trade spreads. Uh, I do the two week out spreads, about 15% of my portfolio, but I don't think I'm an active spread trader enough to where the uh, cheaper commissions and interactive brokers would really benefit me over what I'm doing now. So um, I, I like Robinhood, but I'm not quite 100% with their format yet. I think interactive brokers is great. I still think Thinkorswim is great, but I know there have been some uh, headaches from some investors have mentioned me, some Power Options users after that went through. Um, Elite Options had some good platforms. I just never really looked into them, but I hear they're pretty good and have uh, good prices as well. I think right now I'm just in that phase where I'm comfortable with what I'm trading and how I trade at the two brokers I currently have. Um, and if I see something new that really stands out, I'm going to be tempted to go to them. But right now, there's pros and cons on both sides of moving. I could get better commissions, but I don't necessarily like the platform. Uh, I could get better commissions, but I have to be more of an active trader to get that. So I don't want to really trade my change my trading plan, uh, sort of. Uh, Bola, straightforward answer. Do you trade the 30 delta buy right option on SPY, SPX? No. I'm just going to say no. Never looked at it. Never studied it. Don't even know what to answer. Okay. Uh, Michael says, what tools do you use to compile all your trades for taxes? Well, most of uh, what I trade in Fidelity is in an IRA. That's where most of the married puts, collars, things of that nature are. Um, so uh, that's really simple to do. Uh, but at Options Express, honestly, the answer is I just use the Power Options portfolio. And there's two views on the portfolio. The transactions view, which I can look at just the last year, and Ernie sort of designed that to be follow the form for tax purposes at the end of the trading year. All right, uh, so that's typically what I use uh, is the just the portfolio and the transactions view in the portfolio. All right, ladies and gentlemen, well that sums it up. Thank you for joining me today. I think I hope you've got a lot of useful information out of today's presentation. And even if it was just review for you, it's always good to review uh, the steps there uh, that matter. Great. Uh, sorry, one last question um, from Zaid. Let me make sure I read this all the way through first. Uh, maybe more so if you're doing neutral. Zaid's question is, Michael, do you think that technical analysis really matters for option traders? Yep. <laughs> when I open my bull puts, bear calls, I, I do look for specific technicals. Now you go on to say that I understand they give you an idea about the sentiment of a traders at a specific moment, but I do believe that option trading, especially the neutral strategies, remove the emotional part of the decision. If I look for an iron condor or iron butterfly, if you're classifying that as a neutral position, I do want a specific chart. I want to see a condensing Bollinger Band that's not bouncing all around and shown volatility in the last 20, 40 to 50 days, honestly. Um, I, I want to see something that has a consistent level pattern with the Bollinger Band's 20-day moving average and possibly the MACD as well. I get bit on technicals, but I get bit and can manage. I'm going to show this real quick. Oh, shoot. Sorry, folks. Hold on. Did the wrong thing. I'll show this real quick. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Some of you already know this. Some of you are going to see it maybe tomorrow on the webinar for radioactive trading. Um, let's go. All right. Here we go. Are you seeing my stock chart for P-E-N-N? -N? Okay. So, sometimes you can be wrong. But norm 65 it's really about 68 to 69% of the times I eat, I'm right. Meaning that when I buy and enter a position that has the criteria I want for, let's say, a married put, I want the stock to be above the 20-day, Mac strong, good, MACD crossover, good RSI, and others, for example, those technical indicators I mentioned, 68 to 69% of the time, I'm right. Meaning that the stock continues the trend and goes up 3 to 6% in the next 20 days after I enter the married put trade. That's why I still stick with the criteria I use for that. Now, sometimes you get bit. Here was my entry, October 6th, I believe, on Penn. Recent MACD crossover, stock moving above the 20-day moving average. Two days after I entered the trade, it popped up to about 34.50. It's married put with an April 35 put. Then something happened. It wasn't even in the news. It just got weakness. Okay. Is this a problem? Well, no. I had a married put position that had a max 6% risk all the way out to April. At this point, even at this point on the married put, I was only losing 1%. At this point, I was making 1.4% on the position. I was getting ready to make an adjustment. 
But when this day was happening, I saw the trend reverse. I saw it. So what did I do? I bought another put for November. I managed it. And at this point, the stock was at $28. I bought it at 33 and I bought it over here when it was at 33 and bought the 35 put for $4 in April. At this point here, I was at a profit on this position. I can now choose to roll the long and the short put both at a profit on the position, move them up, and have another straddle that has only about a 1% risk going through December and benefit to sell profit upside and downside. Okay, so was it important? Well, yeah, because every time I usually do this, again, you know, 60% of the time, it does what I want. 69, almost 70% of the time, it does what I want. But when it doesn't, I can still manage it. And I managed it based on the reversals. If I'm looking at a neutral position, I wouldn't have opened this. I wouldn't have opened an iron condor on pen. I would have would not have opened a butterfly on pen. Okay, I might have opened a standard collar at the time. Had what I wanted, faked me out. I'm still at a profit, even though the stock's down about... What is that? I'm sorry, well, it was down about five points from my purchase price. So at 33, you know, we're talking about 14.7% was down and I was at a profit on a married put position because of the adjustment. And now it's come back a little bit today, but the trend still shows me it's down. So I'm still leaving both puts open. I don't think it's flattened yet. Personal opinion, take it as you want. And I'm not saying you have to use technical indicators, but those are usually what I look for when I get into a position based on my, what has worked for me in the past, and at the same time, does what I use for my trigger points, and has worked for me in my bold puts, married puts, diagonal calendar spreads, and more. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, once again, thank you for joining me today. Have a fantastic trading week. Hopefully, we'll see less volatility tomorrow, maybe a little bit of a bounce back, or if not, hopefully, we're in the same positions that we need to be, we're in the structures that we need to be as well. No, uh, I'm sorry to do this, Said. I don't do that. Just let everyone know I don't do this in the webinar. He says, can you please look at Adobe chart and give us your quick analysis about which strategy would be good now? No. No, what strategy is good if you're neutral to bullish and I'm not even going to look at the chart? A married put or a collar so you can control risks. I'm not going to analyze a bull put credit spread or an iron condor because that comes too close to suggesting advice on a particular trade and I can't give direct advice on a particular stock for which strategy would be the best or is your strategy a good one? What I can do is talk about the pros and cons analysis within that strategy, but not tell you, yes, this particular strike trade that you've selected on Adobe is a good trade, I say go with it. Or this is, looks like a good time for you to do a broken wing iron butterfly in this position. I'm not gonna do that because it comes too close to the advice that gets me in trouble, not you, or it could get you in trouble if I'm wrong on the trade and then you're mad at me. So no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna analyze a specific trade or a specific stock for what strategy is best. I can tell you you can use the Power Options tools to easily research and analyze Adobe following what we talked about today to see if that matches the sentiment, the structure, and what you would look for for the strategy you're planning on trading as well. So take care everyone, have a great night. We'll talk to you soon. Happy trading.